As a former prosecutor, um, the comments that were made by that prosecutor, gratuitous, inaccurate, and inappropriate. October 7th, Israel experienced a horrific attack, and I will tell you, we got the calls, the president and myself, in the hours after that occurred. Countless hours with the Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of State, the heads of our intelligence community, and the president was in front of and on top of it all for days and up until now, months. So the way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized could not be more wrong on the facts and clearly politically motivated. Hello, family. Welcome back to another episode of Journey to Harmony. I'm your host, Richard Harmon. Today, I want to talk to you about a story that's taken the internet by storm. Joe Biden was recently uh, probed about his handling of classified documents uh, by a special prosecutor. Um, and he, the, the prosecution came back and decided that whatever was had by Joe Biden was not a infraction and he shouldn't be charged but he also said that joe biden's ability to to recollect some of these things that have happened in the past um, are a bit waning and saying that he may be too old to be in a position that he's in so this has caused a huge uproar from people in the democratic party uh people are blasting the obsession prosecutor for his assessment they're saying that it's wrong. They're saying that he doesn't know what he's talking about. And we're seeing this as a result right now. Uh, we all know that Joe Biden is a bit aged at this point right now. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, in my opinion. Um, you know, any person right now, no one will go out and hire someone to run their be the CEO of their company at 82 or 85 years old. Joe Biden, if reelected, will be about 85 or 86 years old at the end of his term. Um, he's showing the, uh, clear, you know, decline in terms of his faculties. He's showing some some gaffes in terms of memory loss and things of that nature. I'm um, having issues with with balance and walking and things like that have had to be uh, carried about by his wife at numerous occasions. So it makes absolute sense, you know, that someone who is of that age is going to be having some problems. But there's a big problem right now because they are in the process of def of defending the uh, the White House against uh, Donald Trump. Who is up for re-election in 2024 and they're looking to, to to hold that position once again i'm going to play a video here watch a little bit of this come back and talk about this after that if your first time joining please hit that like button consider subscribing to the channel and here we go the report made repeated references to biden's memory and ability to recall certain events including when biden served as vice president and when his son died i've seen the headlines since the report was released about my willful retention of documents this, these assertions are not only misleading, they're just plain wrong. In addition, I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. I was pleased to see he reached a firm conclusion that no charges should be brought against me in this case. The decision to include those observations drew blowback from White House allies and some former Justice Department officials who felt her went beyond his mandate in offering assessments of Biden's memory. Yeah, my memory is fine. My memory, take a look at what I've done since I've become president. None of you thought I could pass any of the things I got passed. How'd that happen? You know, I guess I just forgot what was going on. Former Attorney General Eric Holder called the report, quote, flatly inconsistent with DOJ traditions. Biden's personal attorney and his White House special counsel argued her is not an expert on memory or cognitive abilities. The frequent mentions of Biden's memory clearly touched a nerve with the president, who angrily lashed out at the report during a press conference. The president was particularly furious over the mention of his son's death, saying of her, quote, how in the hell dare he? There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? All right, guys, so there it is. You have it. So Joe Biden is facing a lot of uh, pressure from many different sides that are going to culminate here in the spring. Uh, number one, the, we have received over 8 million um, undocumented Im Im immigrants, people who have illegally crossed over the border since Joe Biden has been in office. Uh, New York City has been inundated with over 162,000 uh, uh, illegal migrants. 
um, recently with the crime spikes that are happening right now. People all around the country are watching videos go viral. Chicago is, is being uh, being overwhelmed. Uh, Denver as well. Their hospital system is, is facing collapse. And many other places around the country are seeing step by step as more and more of the, the, the things that are happening at the border are coming to life. Um, in 2022, there was a issue with the gas prices. And what Joe Biden did at that time is that he took the uh, strategic oil reserve and he drained that um, uh, to, to kind of bring down prices. I think prices at one point were reaching like $4 in, in some Midwest cities, I think almost 7 or $8 on the coast. And people were, were going viral online talking about the cost of things. And what's happening right now with this particular issue is that there's no way of, um, you know, extricating the, these, these particular, uh, you know, illegal migrants that are here. On election day, people are going to go to the voting box, the voting block, and they're going to be stepping over illegal immigrants. They're going to be looking at, at they're going to be waiting in line as they see, um, you know, the results and the, the, the things that have taken place overall as a result of this Biden administration. I've said it in the past and I continue to say that I expect that at the Democratic National Convention, Joe Biden will likely be replaced. Um, as many people are seeing right now that the Democratic Party is losing a great chunk of the black vote. Um, the black vote has, has turned out for the Democratic Party almost 90 percent over the past 60 years. Uh, Donald Trump has started off with a crack at that at 8%, I believe in 2016, moved up to about 15 or 16% in 2020. And there is a high likelihood that he is going to receive somewhere between 20 and 30% of the black vote coming in these 2024 elections. That is a huge issue and likelihood that the Democratic Party will not be able to overcome. Add to that the many people who are watching and who are seeing uh, a mouse, massive amounts of money that are being sent to Ukraine, massive amounts of money that are being sent to um, Israel and all these other places. And, you know, money has been given away to the illegal migrants. And many people have a serious issue with Joe Biden and another, re another chance of re-election for him. Um, so with that, we can expect somebody like Gavin Newsom. We can expect someone like Michelle Obama, who will be looking to step in and try to galvanize um, this particular vote. Uh, Kamala Harris, who is the current vice president, is, is highly unpopular. And the idea of running her against Donald Trump would, would result in a landslide victory for Donald Trump. So we can almost guarantee that she will not be the per person who will be selected. So again, we'll see exactly how this plays out. What are your thoughts on this? Um, do you think that the report was out of line? Uh, do you think that, that Joe Biden is too old? Please comment below. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining and uh, have a good day.